Chapter 6 Population This chapter has eight pages and is read by Shiba. Page 53 Chapter 6 Population Dear friends, can you imagine a world without human beings? Who would have utilized resources and created the social and cultural environment? The people are important to develop the economy and society. The people make and use resources and are themselves resources with varying quality. Coal is but a piece of rock until people were able to invent technology to obtain it and make it a resource. Natural events like a river, flood or tsunami becomes a disaster only when they affect a crowded village or a town. Hence, population is the pivotal element in social studies. It is the point of reference from which all other elements are observed and from which they derive significance and meaning. Resources, calamities and disasters are all meaningful only in relation to human beings. Their numbers, distribution, growth and characteristics or qualities provide the basic background for understanding and appreciating all aspects of the environment. Human beings are producers and consumers of Earth's resources. Therefore, it is important to know how many people are there in the country, where do they live, how and why their numbers are increasing and what are their characteristics? The census of India provides us with information regarding the population of our country. We are primarily concerned with three major questions about the population. First, population size and distribution. How many people are there and where are they located? Second, population growth and processes of population change. How has the population grown and changed through time? Third, characteristics or qualities of the population. What are their age, sex composition, literacy levels, occupational structure and health conditions? Census. A census is an official enumeration of population done periodically. In India, the first census was held in the year 1872. The first complete census, however, was taken in the year 1881. Since then, censuses have been held regularly every tenth year. The Indian census is the most comprehensive source of demographic, social and economic data. Have you ever seen a census report? Check in your library if it has one. Population size and distribution. India's population size and distribution by numbers. India's population, as on March 201, stood at 1,028 million, which account for 16.7% of the world's population. These 1.02 billion people are unevenly distributed over our country's vast area of 3.28 million square kilometer, which accounts for 2.4% of the world's area, as given and shown in figure 6.1. The 2001 census data reveals that Uttar Pradesh with a population size of 166 million people is the most populous state of India. Uttar Pradesh accounts for about 16% of the country's population. On the other hand, the Himalayan state, Sikkim, has a population of just about 0.5 million and Lakshadweep has only 60,000 people. Page 54 Figure 6.1 there are two pie diagrams given, shows India's share of world's area and population. The first pie diagram shows India, 16.7%, 1,000 
and rest of the world shares 83.3% of the population, whereas the area for India is just 2.4% and the area for the rest of the world is 97.6%. From the text, almost half of India's population lives in just five states. These are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar, West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh. Rajasthan, the biggest state in terms of area, has only 5.5% of the total population of India. Figure 6.2 It shows the distribution of population over various states of our country. The pie diagram shows Andhra Pradesh has 7.41% of India's population, whereas West Bengal has 7.79%, Bihar 8.0%, Maharashtra 9.42%, Uttar Pradesh 16.16%, whereas all the other states have 51.2% of the total population of our country. Find out, dear friends, what could be the reason of uneven distribution of population in India? India's population distribution by density. Population density provides a better picture of the uneven distribution. Population density is calculated as the number of persons per unit area. India is one of the most densely populated countries of the world. Do you know only Bangladesh and Japan have higher average population densities than India? Find out the population densities of Bangladesh and Japan. The population density of India in the year 2001 was 324 persons per square kilometer. Densities vary from 904 persons per square kilometer in West Bengal to only 13 persons per square kilometer in Arunachal Pradesh. A study of the figure 6.3 shows the pattern of uneven distribution of population densities at the state level. Here is an activity given. Study the figure 6.3 and compare it with figure 2.4 and figure 4.7. Do you find any correlation between these maps? From the text. Note the states with population densities below 250 persons per square kilometer, rugged terrain and unfavorable climatic conditions are primarily responsible for sparse population in these areas. Which states have density below 100 persons per square kilometer? Assam. And most of the peninsular states have moderate population densities. Hilly, dissected and rocky nature of the terrain, moderate to low rainfall, shallow and less fertile soils have influenced population densities in these areas. The northern plains and Kerala in the south have high to very high population densities because of the flat plains with fertile soils and abundant rainfall. Identify the three states of the northern plains with high population densities. Population growth and processes of population change. Population is a dynamic phenomenon. The numbers, distribution and composition of the population are constantly changing. This is the influence of the interaction of the three processes, namely births, deaths and migrations. Page 55 Given here is a map of India, which shows the density of population. It is a choropleth map, which shows the different states having different densities of population. The states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Gujarat, they are all having a very high density more than 500 persons per square kilometer. In contrast to it, we have a few states like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, which are having density 
between 101 to 250 persons per square kilometer. And the states of Jammu and Kashmir and Arunachal Pradesh specifically are having densities below 100 persons per square kilometer. Please note, Telangana became the 29th state of India on the 2nd June 2014 after the reorganization of the state of Andhra Pradesh. Figure 6.3, page 56. Population Growth Growth of population refers to the change in the number of inhabitants of a country or a territory during a specific period of time, say, during the last 10 years. Such a change can be expressed in two ways. In terms of absolute numbers and in terms of percentage change per year. The absolute numbers added each year or decade is the magnitude of increase. It is obtained by simply subtracting the earlier population, example, that of 1991, from the latter population, example, that of 2001. It is referred to as the absolute increase. The rate or the pace of population increase is the other important aspect. It is studied in percent per annum, example, a rate of increase of 2% per annum means that in a given year, there was an increase of 2 persons for every 100 persons in the base population. This is referred to as the annual growth rate. India's population has been steadily increasing from 361 million in 1951 to 1,028 million in 2001. Table 6.1 tells us the magnitude and rate of India's population growth. In this table, we are given the years mentioned from 1951 to 2001 and the total population in millions, with the absolute increase in the next column each decade and the annual growth rate in percentage. So, in 1951, the total population in millions was 361.0. The absolute increase in the decade was 42.43 million and the annual growth rate recorded was just 1.25%. Similarly, in 1961, the total population was 439.2 million. The absolute increase was registered as 78.15 and the growth was 1.96. In 1971, 548.2 million population with an absolute increase of 102.92 million and the growth rate was 2.20%. In 1981, we see much increase that was 683.3 million people and the annual growth rate was 2.22%. In 1991, 846.4 people were registered with an increase of 163.09 persons in million and the total growth rate was 2.14%. But in 2001, there's a surge in the graph we see and it shows 1,028.7 million people with an absolute increase of 182.32 and the annual growth rate was 1.93. Figure 6.4 A graph is given which is the depiction of the table which has been read before you. It shows the India's population and population growth rate during 1951 to 2001. The bar graph and the line graph are used to depict the data. From the text, table 6.1 and figure 6.4 reveal that from 1951 to 1981, the annual rate of population growth was steadily increasing, which explains the rapid increase in population from 361 million in 1951 to 683 million in 1981. 
find out friends table 6.1 reveals that despite the decline in growth rates the number of people being added every decade is steadily increasing why now from the text since 1981 however the rate of growth started declining gradually during this period birth rates declined rapidly still 182 million people were added to the total population in the 1990s alone an annual addition larger than ever before it is essential to realize that india has a very large population when a low annual rate is applied to a very large population it yields a large absolute increase when more than a billion people increase even at a lower rate the large numbers being added becomes very large india's current annual increase in population of 15.5 million is large enough to neutralize efforts to conserve the resource endowment and environment the declining trend of the growth rate is indeed a positive indicator of the efforts of birth control despite that the total additions to the population base continue to grow and india may overtake china by 2045 to become the most populous country in the world page 57 processes of population change or growth there are three main processes of change of population birth rates death rates and migration the natural increase of population is the difference between birth rates and death rates birth rate is the number of live births per 1000 persons in a year it is a major component of growth because in india birth rates have always been higher than death rates death rate is the number of deaths per 1000 persons in a year The main cause of rate of growth of the Indian population has been rapid decline in death rates. Till 1980, high birth rates and declining death rates led to a large difference between birth rates and death rates, resulting in higher rates of population growth. Since 1981, birth rates have also started declining gradually, resulting in a gradual decline in the rate of population growth. What are the reasons for this trend? The third component of population growth is migration. Migration is the movement of people across regions and territories. Migration can be internal, that is within the country, or international, that is between the countries. Internal migration does not change the size of the population, but influences the distribution of population within the nation migration plays a very significant role in changing the composition and distribution of population the activity on a map trace the migration of each of your grandparents and parents since their birth try and analyze the reasons for each move from the text In India most migrations have been from rural to urban areas because of the push factor in rural areas these are adverse conditions of poverty and unemployment in the rural areas and the pull of the city in terms of increased employment opportunities and better living conditions migration is an important determinant of population change it changes not only the population size but also the population composition of urban and rural populations in terms of age and sex composition in india the rural urban migration has resulted in a steady increase in the percentage of population in cities and towns The urban population has increased from 17.29% of the total population in 1951 to 27.78% in 2001. There has been a significant increase in the number of million plus cities 
from 23 to 35 in just one decade, that is 1991 to 2001. Age Composition the age composition of a population refers to the number of people in different age groups in a country. It is one of the most basic characteristics of a population. To an important degree, a person's age influences what he needs, buys, does and his capacity to perform. Consequently, the number and percentage of a population found within the children, working age and age groups are notable determinants of the population's social and economic structure. Figure 6.5 A pie diagram is given which shows India's age composition. According to this diagram, the adults are 58.7%, the aged comprises only 6.9% and children are 34.4%. The population of a nation is generally grouped into three broad categories. Children, generally below 15 years. They are economically unproductive and need to be provided with food, clothing, education and medical care. Page 58 Working age, that is between 15 to 59 years. They are economically productive and biologically reproductive. They comprise the working population. Aged, that is above 59 years. They can be economically productive, though they may have retired. They may be working voluntarily, but they are not available for employment through recruitment. The percentage of children and the aged affect the dependency ratio because these groups are not producers. The proportion of the three groups in India's population is already presented in figure 6.5. An activity is given here. First, how many children do you know who are engaged as household helpers, laborers in your locality? Second, how many adults do you know in your locality who are unemployed? Third, what do you feel are the reasons for this? Sex ratio. Sex ratio is defined as the number of females per thousand males in the population. This information is an important social indicator to measure the extent of equality between males and females in a society at a given time. The sex ratio in the country has always remained unfavorable to females. Find out why this is so. Table 6.2 shows the sex ratio from 1951 to 2001. Let us read this table. Since this year is 1951, the sex ratio that is females per thousand males were 1946. In 1961, it declined and it was 941. In 1971, it became 930. In 1981, it was 934. 1991, 929 females per thousand males and in 2001, it was recorded as 933 females Per thousand males. Do you know Kerala has a sex ratio of 1058 females per thousand males? Pondicherry has 1001 females for every thousand males, while Delhi has only 821 females per thousand males, and Haryana has just 861. Find out. What could be the reasons for such variations? Literacy rates. Literacy is a very important quality of a population. Obviously, only an informed and educated citizen can make intelligent choices and undertake research and development projects. 
low levels of literacy are a serious obstacle for economic improvement. According to the census of 2001, a person aged 7 years and above who can read and write with understanding in any language is treated as literate. There has been a steady improvement in the literacy levels in India. The literacy rate in the country, as per the census of 2001, is 64.84%, 75.26% for males and 53.67% for females. Why do such differences exist? Occupational structure The percentage of population that is economically active is an important index of development. The distribution of population according to different types of occupation is referred to as the occupational structure. The distribution of the population according to different types of occupation is referred to as the occupational structure. An enormous variety of occupations are found in any country. Occupations are generally classified as primary, secondary and tertiary. Primary activities include agriculture, animal husbandry, forestry, fishing, mining and quarrying etc. Secondary activities include manufacturing industry, building and construction work etc. Tertiary activities include transport, communications, commerce, administration and other services. The proportion of people working in different activities varies in developed and developing countries. Developed nations have a high proportion of people in secondary and tertiary activities. Developing countries tend to have a higher proportion of their workforce engaged in primary activities. In India, about 64% of the population is engaged only in agriculture. The proportion of population dependent on secondary and tertiary sectors is about 13 and 20% respectively. There has been an occupational shift in favour of secondary and tertiary sectors because of growing industrialization and urbanization in recent times. Page 59 Health is an important component of population composition which affects the processes of development. Sustained efforts of government programs have registered significant improvements in the health conditions of the Indian population. Death rates have declined from 25 per thousand population in 1951 to 8.1 per thousand in 2001 and life expectancy at birth has increased from 36.7 years in 1951 to 64.6 years in 2001. The substantial improvement is the result of many factors, including improvement in public health, prevention of infectious diseases, and application of modern medical practices of diagnosis and treatment of ailments. Despite considerable achievements, the health situation is a matter of major concern for India. The per capita calorie consumption is much below the recommended levels and malnutrition afflicts a large percentage of our population. Safe drinking water and basic sanitation amenities are available to only one third of the rural population. These problems need to be tackled through an appropriate population policy. Adolescent population The most significant feature of the Indian population is the size of its adolescent population. It constitutes one-fifth of the total population of India. Adolescents are generally grouped in the age group of 10 to 19 years. They are the most important resources for the future. Nutrition requirements of adolescents are higher than those of a normal child or adult. Poor nutrition can lead to deficiency and stunted growth. But in India, the diet available to adolescents is inadequate in all nutrients. A large number of adolescent girls suffer from 
anemia. Their problems have so far not received adequate attention in the process of development. The adolescent girls have to be sensitized to the problems they confront. Their awareness can be improved through the spread of literacy and education among them. National Population Policy Recognizing that the planning of families would improve individual health and welfare, the Government of India initiated the Comprehensive Family Planning Program in 1952. The Family Welfare Program has sought to promote responsible and planned parenthood on a voluntary basis. The National Population Policy 2000 is a culmination of years of planned efforts. The NPP 2000 provides a policy framework for imparting free and compulsory school education up to 14 years of age, reducing infant mortality rate to below 30 per thousand live births, achieving universal immunization of children against all vaccine preventable diseases, promoting delayed marriage for girls and making family welfare a people-centered program. NPP 2000 and Adolescents NPP 2000 identified adolescents as one of the major sections of the population that need greater attention. Besides nutritional requirements, the policy put greater emphasis on other important needs of adolescents including protection from unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases that is STD. It called for programs that aim toward encouraging delayed marriage and childbearing, education of adolescents about the risk of unprotected sex, making contraceptive services accessible and affordable, providing food and supplements, nutritional services, strengthening legal measures to prevent child marriage. People are the nation's most valuable resource. A well-educated, healthy population provides potential power. Page 60 Exercise Question 1 Choose the right answer from the four alternatives given below. 1 of 1 Migrations change the number, distribution and composition of the population in A. The area of departure B. The area of arrival C. Both the area of departure and arrival or D. None of the above 2 of 1 A large proportion of children in a population is a result of A. High birth rates B. High life expectancies C. High death rates or D. More married couples 3 of 1 the magnitude of population growth refers to A. The total population of an area B. The number of persons added each year C. The rate at which the population increases or D. The number of females per thousand males 4 of 1 According to the census 2001, a literate person is one who A. Can read and write his or her name B. Can read and write any language. C. Is seven year old and can read and write any language with understanding. D. Knows the three R's, that is, reading, writing, arithmetic. Question 2. Answer the following questions briefly. 1 of 2. Why is the rate of population growth in India declining since 1981? 2 of 2. Discuss the major components of population growth. 3 of 2. Define age structure, death rate and birth rate. 4 of 2. How is migration a determinant factor of population change? Question 3. Distinguish between population growth and population change. Question 4. 
What is the relation between occupation structure and development? Question 5. What are the advantages of having a healthy population? Question 6. What are the significant features of the National Population Policy 2000? Project and activities. Conduct a class census by preparing a questionnaire. The questionnaire should contain minimum five questions. Questions should relate to students, their family members, their class performance, their health, etc. Each student is required to fill up the questionnaire. Compile the information in numerical terms, that is, in terms of percentage. Present the information through pie chart, diagram or in any other way.